And let's now take a look at the video board to get us set for the next discipline of dressage. The FEI, the international governing body for equestrian sports, calls dressage, quote, the ultimate expression of horse training and elegance. Often compared to ballet, the intense connection between both human and equine athletes is a thing of beauty to behold, close quote. At the Thoroughbred Makeover, dressage is one of the most popular disciplines in which off-the-track thoroughbreds compete. In 2016, Lauren Turner and Fairway King were named America's Most Wanted Thoroughbred after winning dressage at the Thoroughbred Makeover. One of the most famous thoroughbreds to excel in dressage was Keen, part of the United States bronze medal dressage team at the 1976 Olympics ridden by Hilda Gurney. At the Thoroughbred Makeover, horses and riders will perform their choice of the 2019 U.S. Equestrian Federation Training Level Test 2 or the Western Dressage Association of America 2017 Basic Level Test 1. Then they will perform a five-minute demonstration ride to showcase the level and quality of their training within the dressage training pyramid, judged on rhythm, relaxation, connection, impulsion, straightness, and collection. The first horse and rider to go, Hidden Storm, ridden by rider number 187, Jim Phillips from Mono, Ontario, Canada. And Hidden Storm is an Ontario bred, raced in Canada at Woodbine. This is Jim's second appearance at the makeover partnered with his horse Mike in the jumping and eventing to a top 20 finish previously. The pair also raised $55,000 for Long Run Thoroughbred Retirement Society last year with an I Like Mike fundraising campaign. Whenever. The music, the music yeah, he does, starts, but it starts when he salutes. And we're ready now for Jim and Hidden Storm to enter the arena, and then we will cue up the music from the salute. with Ashley Gubich and we had a little bit of a break where we had the chance to talk with Jen Reutz from Retired Racehorse Project, Aaron Crady from Thoroughbred Charities of America and now back to action starting the first of the flat disciplines in dressage. We had a dressage thoroughbred makeover champion in 2016 and these thoroughbreds have done quite well at dressage and 
the class that we'll see here in the finale, starting with Hidden Storm. Ashley, your, your first impressions. It's a really, really nicely put together horse. Uh, definitely you can see the potential for the dressage. I think uh, might be a little bit nervous in the arena, which we see a lot here at the finale. They did get to compete in the Rolex arena, which is a big environment as well, but sometimes uh, they, they tend to bring in a little bit of extra tension in this environment. Starting to relax just a little bit. You see her loosening up, softening some. But as far as the type of the horse, this is what I would look for in, in a dressage horse. Really uh, nice form, good angles, but, and not a, not a super heavy horse, but just really balanced and uh, tons of potential to move forward with this discipline. I think this is the year that we've seen the most finalists from Canada, um, another Ontario-based rider. And it's cool also to see that the amateurs can be up there in the finals going up against some top-level professionals too. Yep, that's one of the components of the makeovers, kind of clear off all of the advantages someone have may have by having a, a horse that's had more training Juniors, amateurs, professionals all have the same amount of time to train their horses, so you kind of even the playing fields a little bit. So the amateurs, and we've seen a lot of juniors as well on the finale, have had just as much time to work with their horses as the professionals. Each of the riders gets their choice of music, and it really is their choice of routine that they would like to do, and we do see some fancy movements that Jim is attempting. It is nice to see some of those higher level movements, but I think the best thing that you can do is show some of the foundation really, really solid here. We've seen in the past some competitors come and try to do some higher level movements and they bring in a little bit of extra tension and that doesn't necessarily help. So some of the best horses that we've seen have kept it relatively simple but everything is very smooth and rhythmic and if you can get your horse to relax that's definitely going to help you out with this. And there still is about 40 more seconds. Have about 30 seconds left in their five minute freestyle routine. Our first competitor salutes the judge in dressage, Jim Phillips, riding Hidden Storm. Lauren, when you're ready to enter the arena, to come in and Salute the judges, and that will give us the cue to start your music and for you to start the five-minute freestyle routine. He's still a three-year-old, Ashley. He's still looking like an awesome three-year-old. I actually had the chance to meet the parents of the, 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 who bought this horse for their daughter. They're hoping that this horse draws the attention away from the boys. And I think it's such a nice horse would definitely keep someone's attention. All right, we're ready to go. Lauren Burke and Frank's gift.
So this is my first time actually seeing Western dressage, Ashley. Um, it's new to the thoroughbred makeover, and it, it really is overall an, a new movement. It is relatively new, but it is gaining a lot of speed. We're from Colorado, and there are a lot of Western dressage riders out there. It's a really good combination of disciplines and, and really riding worlds, bringing English and Western together. And I always say, regardless of whatever discipline you want to do, dressage is the foundation of it anyways. So it only makes sense to, to show some respect that dressage is in the foundation of these Western horses as well. And if you see, he's not really moving too differently than you would expect from a dressage horse. Uh, in English tack, that foundation is still the same. But the, the difference, though, in riding in, say, Western tack versus English tack, how, what does that call upon for the rider? And Lauren rode both with this horse. It, it really comes down to the rider. Obviously, your, your stirrups are different. You have a bit more freedom in dressage, uh, but they both ride with longer stirrups. They, they set on the horse a little differently, but both dressage saddles and Western saddles give you a nice, secure seat and uh, help you hold a, a specific position. It really comes down to what the rider's comfortable with. Most Western dressage riders come from the Western world, and that's really one of the few major differences in uh, true dressage riders generally started in the English disciplines, but they're fairly easy to swap back and forth to once the rider gets used to the tack, not the horse. Extending across the diagonal at the free walk. I love this horse. This, I mean, just look at him chomping on the, the bit, licking his lips. He, he's really engaged. Yeah, this is a really, really special horse. Any horse of any age, any exposure to come in here is really impressive um, to be able to handle it. But he just seems so calm. And at such a young age, these horses you don't find all of the time. You go to certainly off the track to, to get a horse and don't go expecting to find them like this all around. This horse was in the TCA Covered Arena earlier in Field Hunters. She Ended up finishing second. Very versatile horse, and, and you, you can't buy a brain. You can't create a brain, brain like this. It's something that they just have. Uh, she's also taking the strategy of what I had said before is Sometimes it's best to keep it very simple and straightforward and just show how well you can do those fundamental movements. And that's really what a lot of this competition is about, the foundation that you put in on the horse. And, I mean, these foundations are rock solid, how he's reaching to the connection. And, and the rhythm has stayed consistent pretty much through this whole entire routine. Got just about 40 seconds left. That is Frank's gift. The three-year-old ridden masterfully and gracefully by Lauren Burke.
And so they exit the arena, having been in here both in English tack in the Field Hunters and Western tack, Western dressage, a great showcase with this horse, Frank's Gift. We'll be awarding several special awards when the competition ends, and there's going to be a special one as Western Thoroughbred is sponsored a buckle for the top Western competitor in dressage and as well as in competitive trail and to the winners of ranch work and barrel racing. And this is your top placing Western dressage horse, Lauren Burke with Frank's Gift. Next, we will move on to rider number 198, Hula Pie is ridden by Michelle Hout from Fort Worth, Texas. This horse is part of the ASPCA Makeover Marketplace. Michelle Hout is a hunter jumper trainer and owner of Confederate Park Farm in Fort Worth, Texas. Was pregnant when she got hula pie, sight on seen off the track at Louisiana Downs. Rode hula pie for six months pregnant, focusing on flat work only and groundwork at the end. And he started jumping a couple of months ago Michelle says he's a sweet guy who loves his job and having his own person. They competed in show hunters and dressage. A veteran of 98 starts from two years old in 2011 until nine years old last year. So a war horse and $250,000 in earnings bred in Louisiana and raced primarily at Louisiana Downs, Evangeline Downs, and Delta Downs in the state. Hula Pie, a 10-year-old, Dark Bay Gelding. And here they are entering the Dressage Arena, Michelle Hout and Hula Pie. So Ashley, we've gone from an unraced horse to a horse that made 98 starts. We've got range here, that's for sure. I can see why she was willing to buy this horse uh, without seeing him in person. Uh, he's a quite striking horse, obviously has a good record. And I've said before, I like the war horses because they hold up really well. And uh, just really a, a lovely horse. I could see him standing out in a, in a herd. And again, we can't emphasize it enough. 98 starts, if you hold up for a 98 start career, you are a sound horse, which bucks conventional wisdom. Yep, there's a lot of people that look beyond the war horses because they think they've been used up and if they're done with their career racing after that many races there must be something wrong with them uh, from my personal experience and many other trainers that i've talked with it's generally not the case but even though he's 10 and has been on the track he's probably been around a little while he seems a little bit more tense uh, in this covered arena maybe a little bit more up i bet he was a little bit more fluid and relaxed out in the open when he was in Rolex Stadium. Still really lovely horse, but just carrying a little bit of tension in with him today.
so they're performing to a Spanish guitar rendition first of the song Africa and now this is a Spanish guitar version of Final Countdown and full disclosure I picked the music for them they said they wanted something classical so and something unique and, and it's about as unique as it gets this is what happens when you leave music selection up to the announcer. He's looking like he's relaxing a little bit more. That's a nice stretch in the free walk. So see if he can come out and keep on to that relaxation and loosen up a little bit in the end of his test here. What are your assessments on the horse's body type? I really love it. This is the kind of horse I like. I like a big structure and just really well balanced. Got a good muscle on him. Uh, not too faint of a horse, but not too bulky either. That is the freestyle routine for Michelle Hout and Hula Pie. The 10 year old war horse, we went from a horse that was unraced in Frank's gift to 98 starts in Hula Pie. They came in third entering the finale, so we have the top two riders in the prelims to go. Next, we'll have a horse that we will see twice during the finale. This is going to be the first finale performance for junior rider Danica Utt and Altruism from Tallahassee, Florida. This pair will also be in the finals of Freestyle. Altruism is a horse that sold as a yearling in 2015 for $160,000, 11 race career, won one time at Monmouth Park in New Jersey, also raced in Florida and New York, finished up the career in Florida. Danica is from West Virginia. There's a profile of her on the retirement, retired racehorse project Facebook page. Got this horse at the beginning of January and the horse also competes in eventing, has been competing at novice and schooling training, and would like to continue to event this horse and take him up the levels. Judges are ready for altruism and Danica Ut, And we'll get the music going when they enter the arena and salute the judges.
This is one of the few horses that actually had the chance to be in the covered arena during prelims because this pair competed in freestyle. You had the chance to meet the pair and what were your impressions of young Danica? She's very well spoken, really mature for her age and really like seeing them together. They really had a good connection. I think he has competed in here, but with the freestyle, he seems a little surprised that there's a, a dressage arena in here now. So uh, he's holding a bit more attention than I, w I was hoping to see from him since he had competed in here before. And I've seen him. He's a really, truly lovely mover. So we'll see as, as his five minutes go if he starts relaxing a little bit more. So when they competed in freestyle, their freestyle routine was bridalless, and he almost seemed more relaxed without the bridle. I mean, is there a reason why some horses can, I mean, obviously day-to-day day -day things can change with the horse, but yeah, he seemed almost a little bit more tense with the bridle in his mouth. That definitely can happen. I've worked with horses bridleless, bridleless bareback, and sometimes when you take all of that off, and uh, there's a little bit less pressure put on them. This in a dressage test, they're expected to hold frame, hold rhythm, uh, be very immediate with their responses. So sometimes when you take that pressure off, they're a little bit more comfortable. You can see he's starting to relax some, so I think it might have just been a little bit overwhelming when he first came in and saw the different environment in here. And then after we'll do 63. 61st and then the sale record. Okay. Yeah, so I'll keep I'll lead into it. There's the salute from Danica Ott and Altruism. Finalists in both of the disciplines they've entered. We'll see them back in freestyle. It's definitely worth watching them in freestyle. They had a very rhythmic routine where Danica rode bridleless.
And what's amazing is that Danica came here with such confidence for a young 18-year-old. And in fact, her trainer isn't here, so they've been talking on the phone, but with Danica and her mom here able to handle this environment at the Kentucky Horse Park extremely well. Well, we have one more horse and rider to go, the leaders in dressage coming into the finale. Rider number 136, Allison O'Dwyer from Laurel, Maryland. And Allison's husband is Jerry O'Dwyer, a trainer on the track. So it's always great when you have the families that have their feet in both the race and the sport horse world. And their friends with Andrew McKeever was the trainer of this horse, fifth ace on the track. And that's the same trainer that Allison got her 2017 dressage champion chapter two from. Judges are ready to go for fifth ace, a four-year-old son of Bernardini out of a Giants Causeway Dam, raced without much success in just three starts on the track. But taking to a new career competing this weekend in eventing and making the finals in dressage. And the final competitor about to enter the arena. Judges say they are ready, and so Allison, when you're ready, we'll have the music queued up. They were the leaders in dressage, presented by Fazig Tipton coming into the finals. can see why this horse is coming in in first place right when they entered the arena even before they went into the actual dressage arena uh, it just has this natural spring to him uh, and then on top of that you got a really nice relaxed horse who's handling this environment really well so you get a nice natural quality gait and then allow them to relax uh, with a good rider you're going to get some nice stuff quality rider who won dressage in 2017 with the horse chapter two, made the finals in eventing last year. Benji was known as Allison Willoughby. And now married to trainer Jerry O'Dwyer. She is good friends with one of our friends in Colorado, trainer Laura Backus. So Laura, if you're watching, Hello to you, and Allison sings your praises as well.
Allison's a really classy rider and he's making her work a little bit today and she's really nice and quiet and it's really hard to see all these little corrections she's having to make and tidying up a little bit of his performance and making the pair look really, really good together. So what are some of the things that she's doing that people at home should pick up on? Because this is someone that you definitely would want to model your riding after. There's just a few moments of tension, uh, swinging of the hind end, a little bit of bracing, and she very tactfully is bringing him back and setting him back, him back up underneath himself so he's able to kind of lift up and lighten that front end. She's doing it with almost no movement or correction to the eye. It's very subtle and done really well. Yeah, it's one of those things if you know what to look for, I mean, you can see, man, she's hard at work. And then at the same time, you kind of just take a step back and it, it looks effortless, but there's a lot that's gone into this ride. I mean, right there, you, you saw that. We've seen some of these horses that are really nervous working and then relax down into that free walk very well. And he's, uh, been a little bit more relaxed overall and then actually built up a little bit more tension in that free walk to so see if he can steady back out. What is it about the free walk that just gets the horses to just release and exhale? The, the goal of it is to get them to relax by having that they have been working and holding themselves up and should uh, have a nice top line through it. So when you give them the opportunity with that lighter contact, you want them to reach down and relax into that lighter contact. Some of these horses use that contact, even if it's steady and correct, it's kind of like a security blanket. So sometimes when you go to do that free walk, um, they get a little nervous when that contact goes away. Allison O'Dwyer, the former Thoroughbred Makeover Champion in Dressage in 2017 with Chapter 2, completing the test with fifth ace. A very tactful ride, and you may have heard in the arena, Allison passing on the message to the horse that he was a good boy today. So great quality in dressage, and the 2016 winner of dressage, Fairway King and Lauren Turner, they went on to win the Thoroughbred Makeover Championship. And we'll see who the contender from dressage is for the 2019 Thoroughbred Makeover Champion. Coming in in 10th place, rider number 122, Casey Mix aboard Edgar Jones. In ninth place, number 221, rider is Jenna Jack, the horse is Katano. In eighth place, rider number 268, Emily Broyer Curtis aboard Make America Great. Seventh place, number 357, Josephine Irish aboard Wright Ben. In sixth place, number 310, Aaron Miller aboard O Ganador. Fifth place went to rider number six, Danica Ut. Fourth place, number 198, Michelle Hout and Hulapai. In third place, number 187, Jim Phillips and Hidden Storm. In second place, 
Number 151, Lauren Burke and Frank's Gift. The winner of dressage at the 2019 TCA Thoroughbred Makeover also won in 2017, rider number 136, Allison O'Dwyer, riding fifth ace to the championship this year. Recognizing the prizes, the top five receive cash prizes, the top 10 receive ribbons. The winner receiving $5,000 plus a horseware cooler, Godolphin cooler, a boot bag from Noble Equestrian, and polo wraps from Tribute. Second place receives $1,000 plus a boot bag from Noble Equestrian. Third place, $700 plus a boot bag from Noble Equestrian. Fourth place, $500. And fifth place, $300. And the winner also will advance to be the contender from dressage to be the thoroughbred makeover champion. Let's hear one more time for all of the dressage finalists at the 2019 TCA Thoroughbred Makeover and particularly to the winner, fifth ace and Allison O'Dwyer.